Hey guys, welcome back to Live with Lexi Howell. I'm so excited that you guys are here to join me. If we have not met before, I am Lexi Howell. And y'all, if you have never seen Live with Lexi Howell, let me just tell you what it is really quickly, okay? It is a conversation that I get to have with special guests each and every episode. And we talk about life and Jesus. And we um, just talk about where the Lord is moving in our lives, what we hope that we would step into in the future I mean literally everything and we center it all through laughter community and real conversations Mm -hmm. and I am absolutely excited about all of my guests but I'm super excited (laughs) y'all about today's special guest I've got with me the one the only Megan Edmonds with me I am oh my gosh Megan I am so excited (laughs) that you are here I wish I had the sound effects of like clapping (laughs) and cheering because you have literally been such an anchor for me, I feel like, and an encouragement through a screen. And we've never had a conversation face-to-face before, but you are just amazing. And I went on a tangent about you because I'm really that excited that you're here on Lava Lexi Howe. So welcome to the podcast, Megan. How are you? Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, that was like way more deserving of an intro than I deserve. So thank you. It is my yeah honor and joy to be talking with you. Um, to be honest, it's been a busy morning, but I am good. I am so excited for this conversation and just to, just to get to chat with you and, and with everyone who's listening. Yeah, absolutely. And we're definitely going to do that. We're going to have a lot of conversations. I've got a lot of questions for you. I'm ready to pick your brain. I'm ready to hear what the Lord wants to speak through you and the sense of social media mm-hmm. and in your personal life and your personal relationship with the Lord. This is going to be so good. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. No pressure <laughs> at all. It's just going to be good. Um, and I'm excited for people to hear what the Lord is doing in your life and where he's leading you and all the different things. Like I'm genuinely so excited. So because I have so many questions for you, so many things I want to talk about, let's start out with you introducing yourself to the people. Perfect. Absolutely. Well, my name is Megan Edmonds. I just got married this summer. So um, we were talking about it a little bit before, but legally I'm still Megan Holmes, but um, in spirit, Megan Edmonds, I am a wife. I am a podcaster, social media manager, entrepreneur, and I run a community on Instagram called She Lives Purposely. So in short, that's a little bit, just a little bit about who I am. Yeah. little summary there. Literally, I have, I mean, you said it all. You're a wife, you're an entrepreneur, you're a social media manager, you're so many things, a podcast host. Like what? what? Wow. And how old are you? I am 25 right now. Yeah. That is the wildest thing ever. I mean, genuinely crazy. Um, And we're going to get into everything that you talked about. And we're going to start out with She Lives Purposely. Where, tell us about what She Lives Purposely is and how did that come to be? Like, what, what in the world? It's so good. Absolutely. You're so sweet. Um, so uh, this is, I have like two versions of the story, the short and the long. I think we're going to go with the long. So let's go ahead. See. Um, but She Lives Purposely is basically a Christian resource for women to encourage them to live for Jesus and for me, that looks like living purposely. That's what I believe living purposely is, is living the way that God has called us to and to live what he's called us to. Um, and so it started in a college project. Um, so basically I started interviewing women that I felt like lived very purposefully and transparently it wasn't specifically Christian. It was just something I'm like, who can I, you know, people that I admire, whether they're Christian or not, like how do they live purposefully? And people that I had asked to be on um, I didn't even realize we're actually believers. So everyone ended up being a believer, which was so just like the Lord, I feel like, um, in how, in how he did that. Um, and then a couple years later, I just really felt the Lord stirring up my heart to continue it. And I was getting that from so many people around me too, which was such an encouragement. And so I was like, okay, how can I make this more sustainable? Because interviewing people, like that's not going to be consistent, you know, like it's a lot. Um, then podcasting came in later. So it's a different story, but, um, Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll make a blog out of it and I'll make it a blog and an Instagram. And then it kind of just developed and grew from there. Then I started merch, which has kind of dwindled down a little bit. And um, now I have a podcast with it, which is incredible. But truly the story of She Lives Purposely started years before that. It was my first 
semester of college <laughs> and um, we just had a family tragedy. It was like literally three weeks into my first semester I was in California um, and my, my grandmother had passed away. She was murdered, um, which was like the most tragic thing that had ever happened in our family. Um, and it really shook me like very, very much so. And I would have considered myself somebody, you know, who followed the Lord diligently all throughout. Um, but I think just having something like that in your life, like just kind of began to reshape like how I saw the Lord. And I was confused of like, you know, how can he be good and all powerful if he allowed this to happen? Like, how can I reconcile that? Um, and, and it's funny because, you know, there's such a common question, like if God is real, like why do bad things happen? And I think as Christians, sometimes we're like, oh, you know, because sin and all, and we have all of these answers. And I would say that too. And then something, it felt like it hit so hard. Um, that I started to ask those same exact questions. Um, and I was actually just kind of going over this whole story with my husband literally yesterday. We were on a walk and I was like telling the whole thing um, just, and we were saying how it's so good to remember the things that the Lord does in your life, you know, sense of remembrance. Um, but so I struggled for months, just very angry and very bitter and very sad. I remember I cried, I think every single day, probably multiple times a day for months. Um, one day specifically, I remember, just looking up, like we had a skylight in my house and looking up to sky and just like screaming. Like I just started yelling, like at the Lord, like I was so angry. Um, and, and I remember praying though, too, at the same time, just to like, for him to heal me, we, we didn't have any answers to the tragedy that occurred, like who, why, nothing. So answers, reasons, anything, like I just was seeking the Lord. Um, and then in March, actually the same retreat, it's a yearly retreat is coming up in two weeks, but, um, there was a retreat that my church had. And <clears throat> I remember two of my best friends at the time told me, they were like, Megan, the Lord is going to meet you. Like he's going to speak to you. We have been praying for you. And like, he's told both of us, we know, like he's going to meet you. And I remember transparently being like, I've already prayed this a hundred times. Like that's not going to happen, you know, whatever. Like I've just been waiting already. And, um, Lo and behold, so we go to this retreat and the very first night, the pastor opens up to 2 Corinthians 1, um, which talks about how God is a God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we can go comfort others with that same comfort. And, you know, it sounds like a simple, like we hear this all the time. We know God's our comforter, but for me, like I remember reading it and it was such a God moment. Um, and I don't say this lightly. This was an audible, like, you know, I, I'm very careful to say like, God spoke to me so loud and, you know, clear, like something like that. But I remember vividly those words in second Corinthians one, just lifting off of the page. And I remember the Lord, like, you know, I was questioning his goodness and all of this. And I remember just hearing like, you know, I'm good. Like, you know who I am, you know? And I just remember being so shook. Um, and then we had sung a, a song that was, it was kind of new at the time, but it's, I am set free. Um, and it says, you are the hand that reaches out to save. I am set free. And I just remember breaking down, like the Lord really met me in that moment. Um, and so fast forward to when I was started creating she lives purposefully with the interviews, the original like deal. And I'm like, what should I do? At that same time, I was kind of reflecting on that season where of that retreat. And I'm like, why did I feel like the Lord met me? Like, why did I feel like I was healed? Because after that, I was on fire for Jesus. Like since that day till, you know, now it's just been like, the Lord is so faithful. And I'm like, why specifically did that happen? And I, I bring it back to second Corinthians one, like one, because he's our comforter, but we see that he comforts us so that we can comfort others. So the pain and the comfort have a purpose. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, if pain has a purpose, if comfort has purpose, then every season of our lives has a purpose. If the worst seasons do, then the best seasons do, then the mundane does. So then we all do and every day does, and we have to be living that out. Like, otherwise we're sinking in our sorrow without the Lord. But if he gives purpose to all things, like we have to be chasing that and living that out. So that's a super long story, but that's kind of where that originated from is like, if pain has purpose, everything does. And we are called to live purposefully. We're called when he comforts us to comfort others. We're called to do something in every season. Um, so pretty much that is in short or in long rather um, where she was purposely came from.
oh my gosh, like was not ready for that. Was not expecting that literally have goosebumps. I mean, oh. it is insane. Your story is so unique and specific to you. However, the God of your story makes it mm -hmm. relatable to others without having to walk through exactly what you walk through. And yeah wow i mean wow such devastation to be restored in such a way that only god can to now be this yeah. like person to restore other people and it's not when i when you restore other people it's not in your own strength you understand that i was restored yeah. not by my own strength therefore whenever you are restored no it's not me it's the lord who restored yeah. me and that is just, I mean, literally just blown away. There's so many things that you said, and I hope the Holy Spirit brings it to my mind. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just went on a rant there. No, I mean, it was so good. And like, oh my gosh, I really should have like taken notes, but good thing this is recorded. So I have something to refer back to and like <laughs> listen to it again. But in the beginning, you talked about remembering and how it's mm -hmm. so important for us to remember mm -hmm. um, the, the goodness of the Lord, the suffering that we experience. And how that blends together i think and i've talked about this with my family and with people that i talk to on the day to day is that the lord is calling us to remember it's because that we remember that we have this like firm foundation and confidence for what's to come and where we are right when we remember yeah. oh when i was grieving in that moment i remember the lord bringing me to this verse or i remember the lord showing me a red bird and just bringing me so much hope and we remember so that where we are, we're like, if he yeah. was faithful, then if he was intentional, then if he stepped Amen. off of his throne and met me in my mm -hmm. room with the door closed and nobody else saw me, but him, then where I am in singleness, where I am in job loss, where I am and whatever it is, mm -hmm. I'm waiting on the Lord. He's going to meet me there and he's going to meet me in the future. And Wow, your story is just so, so good. good. So I really do love remembering is like something that the Lord is embedding in me right now. And so I was very passionate whenever you were saying it. I was like, yes, so, so good. Um, your story of losing your grandmother and how it happened such a tragic way. But I think it truly shows and we see this in Bible times and we see it also in the people to our left and to our right. The yeah. most drastic, devastating moments that we experience is where the Lord does his best work. I have my own story of my own and actually very close to you. I yeah. lost my grandmother a few months into my freshman year of high wow. school uh, or college rather. And it was devastating for our family because she was the glue. And in yeah. that, I mean, the Lord has shifted how we function how we wow. how we live how we love how you know not yeah. only each other but the lord there's this new firm foundation that has been set that wasn't there before because if we can be honest our foundation was on my grandmother and never mm. really truly on the lord and so listening to your story having my own story and those that are listening now yeah. maybe you didn't lose a loved one but maybe there is something that has been lost that now you have this new setting foundation that the lord has poured into your life and and it does typically come through hard times and we see in the bible i mean many people i, I mean i can name people where they went through devastating situations and then on the other side their principles that we still live to to this day yeah. because they went through something hard and i think your story behind she lives purposely is just so god like i'm, mm. I'm literally shaking right now like, i just want you to know because your story mm. is so god and so, so good, i don't yeah. even know i don't even know what the words would be for that but the light that you have within you is truly the Lord and the mm -hmm. way that you approach what you get to do, what you get to steward. It's just amazing. I, I literally, I have nothing else. That's it guys. You're such an We're encouragement. Good. I'm just like thinking it, I'm like sitting here listening to you. That's so <laughs> encouraging. No, but it's so true because I really feel like, like you said, so much of the growth that we experience, the core pieces of our life oftentimes are rooted in suffering in some sort of like shift in our life, whether it is a tragic like death, whether it's, you know, sickness, whether it's a job loss or, you know, something that may seem more minor, but can shake us like a breakup or, you know, a loss of a friend or whatever it is. Um, anything along those lines and praise the Lord. Like the Lord is able to comfort in every single one of our lives, whether it is the most tragic situation or whether it's something we feel is so like inconsequential, but feels like it's shaking us. The Lord needs us in that and he can use all of that and redeem all of that. Um, and he's so faithful. And I just love that you re-brought up those kind of stones of remembrance and remembering those things, because I really feel like a lot of times 
that is what helps to get us through something. When something new comes up, we can look back and say, the Lord healed me then, he can heal me again. The Lord, you know, brought me through and he can do it again and he will do it again in whatever way that might look like this time because, you know, he does do new things all the, th all the time. But um, yeah, he's just so good and so faithful. And I, I love that you brought that up again too. So good, so good. I think like in what we're saying too is that, we have different <laughs> stories, but the same God and, and yeah. the Lord's been doing this for a long time, right? He's been redeeming, restoring and rejuvenating our hearts and our minds and our, you know, our, our mindsets and, and the way that we go about life. He's been doing this for a long time and he's still mm -hmm. not tired. I was actually yeah. just listening to Priscilla Shire talk about the patience of God and just saying like, um, how sometimes we can't go to the Lord. Oh, I want to talk about your transparency, by the way, too. Hopefully I can remember. <laughs> but um, Priscilla was talking about how the Lord is so patient that um, we feel like we can't tell God some things or we try to hide things from the Lord or we yeah. don't want to bring up certain situations. We don't want to tell the Lord that we're angry at him or we don't want to tell the Lord that we're disappointed by him. Um, and, and I remember her saying something that absolutely freed me. She was like, you can go to the Lord with all your stuff as well as all the people in the world and you still cannot tire out the Lord, the mm. patience of the father. And she said it because she said, you're not that strong. You're not mm -hmm. strong enough to run out, to um, tire out the patience, the kindness, the loving so um, character of who the Lord is. And that for me, lets me know I can go to the Lord boldly with everything that I have and everything that I'm feeling and know that what I'm going to him with is not going to tire him out. It's not going to, um, empty out his tank of love for me it is it, it I'm not that strong I'm not strong enough to make the Lord um abandon me in this way like the Lord just comes after me step after step and I just think it's so encouraging to know that uh, we can be transparent with the father we can ask God questions without questioning him we can go to the Lord with everything that we have and just know that he's not going to get tired like his patience okay. cannot run out his love for us cannot run out we're not that strong we're not that good we're not that broken that he cannot replenish and restore whatever we're bringing before him and um what I really love about your story and we're gonna get into the other questions I know <laughs> this is just so good and I feel like for anyone listening I know for myself this is this is encouraging but you were talking about being transparent with your people and also with the father. I yeah. love that because that is something that I'm really anchored in. In my book, I'm very transparent about like the different things that I walk through, the sins, the struggles, the questions, mm -hmm. the doubts, the fears, all of that. And I believe that transparency, when we're transparent with the father, we're actually free in everything that we are bound by, right? So I can only be free from what I share with him wow. about. And so what I love about your story is that you were transparent with the Lord saying, hey, I'm, I'm mad at you. I don't get it. Like, if you want to do something, Lord, I need reasons. I need answers. I need help. I need you to heal me. And so it's that transparency that you actually found your healing. So an encouragement, I think, for anyone listening, and even for mm -hmm. myself, when it's so easy to sometimes get quiet or maybe not share or not say, not be real with the Lord, obviously he already knows our thoughts. But when you're real, when you vocalize, hey, I'm disappointed, Lord, that you haven't fulfilled this promise yet. Hey, Lord, I, I miss my grandmother and I wish, you know, you didn't take her when you did. When we yeah. go to the Lord with this, then he can speak back to you what he wants to share with you. And that's what you experienced at the yeah. church um, at that time. And it's just amazing. Absolutely. So, so no. Yeah, and I'll honestly, I'll share another really quick story too. Yeah. It actually happened three days before my grandmom had passed away. Um, so all throughout high school, again, transparently, like high school and junior high, I really struggled with doubts, like doubting my faith, was I a Christian, all of those things. And it was something that very much frustrated me. Um, and, and I promise this gets back to that point of like how, when we are transparent with the Lord, he can really speak to us. Um, so frustrating to me. And I remember again, so I'm, I'm in college first semester, I'm reading my Bible and it was Bible college, just so that's gonna make more sense in the story. Um, <clears throat> so I'm reading my Bible and I think it was Matthew 14 where Peter walks on water and he's walking, you know, and then he sees the storm around him, the wind, the waves, and he gets afraid and he starts to drown. Mm -hmm. And it says that he cries out to the Lord, Lord, save me. And the next verse is that the Lord immediately 
reached out his hand to save. And I remember reading that and I closed my Bible and I was so mad again, you know, this is three days before all this is going to happen. And I was so mad because I was like, I have been crying out to you for years to save me from my doubts and, you know, all of this. And immediately is not a word that I would use um, to describe how you've helped me because I am still struggling with this. Um, and I kind of left my time with the Lord that morning, like in frustration. Um, and so that night we had chapel and actually they sang for the first time that I had ever had heard it, I am set free. And the lyric goes, you are the hand that reaches out to save, I am set free. And I remember kind of this moment where like it can be coincidental, but I really felt like the Lord was speaking to me. And had I not like read that passage this morning about his hand being the one that reaches out to save, was vulnerable with him and like speaking out my frustration and then hearing those lyrics of his word later on, like the Lord is able to, when we are seeking him, communicate with us, communicate yes. back to us. And he's able to, too, you know, when we're wandering and all those things. But like, again, in that story, like had I not read those words, then those words later on may not have meant anything to me, you know, at that moment. So all that to say, I totally agree. Being transparent with the Lord, even though he already knows being transparent with him is so good. Yeah. So, so good. And you talking about that, I was actually reading a Bible um, study with my family, reading Crazy Faith by Michael Todd. And he was talking about one of the guys, um, I don't know his name, but he was blind. And the Lord asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The mm -hmm. Lord knew he was blind, right? Yeah. I mean, come on, Jesus, you're, you're God. You know that he's blind. You know that he, will, I think it was Bartimaeus, now that I think about it. And he said, what do you want me to do for you? This lets us know that the Lord knows what we need. He just wants mm. to hear it. He wants to have a conversation and transparency, vulnerability, being real and raw with the Lord is part of what he wants from us. Like he wants mm. to hear where you are so that he can meet it. And just like you shared, you read the verse, then you were honest with the Lord that you were frustrated and it made sense. It, it was magnified. It was like words jumping to you and listening yeah. to the song that, Hey, I just read this. I was real with you. And this is how you've answered. So, yeah. um, I think for anybody watching is be real with the Lord. I think that's one of the themes here. Remember the Lord's faithfulness for where you are now. Um, remember that he is not against you. He is for you and that you grow best in the mm -hmm. darkest place, right? It's from, we're beautiful, made beautifully in the dark of the womb, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and the, the world is created from a dark place, a void place. So how the Lord works, kingdom living is so much different than, yeah. than worldly ways. And I don't even mean just like the world, the evil world. I mean, like by how we function in and of ourselves, how the Lord creates, how the Lord um, grows, how the Lord moves. It's so much different than how we would yeah. want him to grow, move and create us. Mm -hmm. And so it's from the darkness that beauty is made from the brokenness that masterpieces are made, all the different things. And I think your story is this beautifully broken a story that just shines the light of Jesus through mm. the cracks, you know what I mean? And it paints this beautiful picture of redemption. Um, and, and your story of Sheila's purposely just has this more depth to it for me. I mean, I found it encouraging. I found your ministry absolutely encouraging, but now hearing the heart behind mm. it, I am honestly blown away by wow. your ministry. I'm honestly blown away by the Lord and how he uses people to yeah. do miracles. Like, just magical thing. I mean, I'm just, I don't even know. I really don't. He is know. so good. Yeah. So he's good. so faithful. So faithful. So yeah. good. So hopefully that's encouraging to you guys to go to the Lord with mm. whatever you're feeling and knowing that he's not intimidated. He's not upset. He's not, um, any of those things, but he embraces it. He welcomes yeah. it. And there he will speak to you in different ways. We talked about in song, we talked about in scripture, but the Lord can speak to you through a bird passing by. Now, hopefully the bird don't speak, but <laughs> the thing is, you know, like the bird passing by just gives you hope. Just knowing mm -hmm. that if he dresses the lilies with beauty and, sl and splendor, yeah. and if he uh, feeds the sparrows and like how much more does he love and, and clothe and want and desire and pursue us? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so, yes, next question. So good. <laughs> so good. We're just going to keep going. Um, so one of the things is you believe that the Lord told you to do this ministry full time, which yeah. meant that you had to quit your job 
was that an easy decision and talk about the whole like how did the lord tell you what did you think in that moment like tell us yeah absolutely um i think transparently too and i think this is something that we see as a common theme as well it was really like practical the way that it kind of went about um but also at the same time the lord like was so clear in different things so um you know of course i wanted to to do she lives purposely full time and um there was kind of a season i guess it was like yeah it was in november when it was when i actually gave my like two three weeks notice mm-hmm. um when when some things just started happening and i really felt like okay like this is i think this is actually why like i think i'm actually called to leave right now mm-hmm. um and the lord i just was kind of thinking that there wasn't anything crazy that like you know i said you know but i was we were really nervous transparently because mm-hmm. So like just financially, it would have, there would have needed to be a big like income in another way, something that she was purposefully was not providing. Um, And so at the same time as well, I was doing social media managing, but kind of very in a smaller realm. And I was thinking to myself, like, what if I opened up the door to more clients? Um, Because then I can like almost swap out those incomes, for example. And it was not something that I had done previously because I was working in another job. So I'm like, I'm not going to do that at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, But I opened up the door to more clients. um, And the same week, so we were thinking about it, talking about it. And we kind of were just thinking to ourselves, like, this almost feels like something that the Lord would have me do because it would give me more time for Sheila's purposely to be able to pour into that. Um, give us another income. But again, there was nothing secure yet. Like there was no financial stability. Like if I left that day, you know, all of it. Um, And so that was one thing is my husband and I were like in agreement with it, which was a big deal because I'm like, you know, I could have all my hopes and dreams, but like if financially it's not there, it's very likely that the person you're like helping with financially is going to be like, "Mm, maybe not, but he was for it. Um, And so we also asked for prayer from our parents from both of them just in kind of deciding what to do and from friends too and I remember talking to my dad and it was crazy because again somebody else that I would think would be like very practical and like all right you should probably wait all of these things and he said like just if you if you think this is right like step out in faith and I remember thinking to myself like oh my gosh like you know I can do that kind of thing you know um and and then we talked to his parents and they said the lord is going to honor you for stepping out in faith like those same words stepping out in faith so that was enough for me i was like all right i'm just going to do it i'm going to step out in faith i had some friends tell me the same thing and i told my boss and in that conversation he said like whose bosses says this to them when you know you tell them you're quitting he said the lord is going to honor you for stepping out in faith and i just was like oh my goodness like this is from the lord like so wild um and that same week that i had given my like notice um a bunch of new clients started coming in and making inquiries like not beforehand you know but like that moment after i had stepped out in faith and praise the lord like the business is doing better than i literally could have imagined this is all jesus um and and it has given me more time to pursue she lives purposely and and she lives purposely is still you know like full time is everything that I want for this, my own business. Um, but pretty much, I guess in short would be one, just listening to the Lord and like his little promptings. Um, and two, listening to the practicality of where you're at. I think the Lord uses that so often. It's like practically, what is the next step for you? Practically, if you feel like you, it's time to leave, like what is going to be the next step? And then encouraging you with those little take, you know, step out in faith, step out in faith, like people constantly flooding that and not disregarding those things. Cause I think sometimes we can like swipe it away as coincidence, but the Lord, like he speaks to us. And I think it's so important to really be paying attention to that. Um, so all in short, it was not an easy decision because it was pretty like intimidating, you know, um, just financially. And it was a big change. I'd been at the job for a couple of years, um, was really comfortable with the people there. And I still, you know, um, keep in touch with them. They're great people. It's a great company. Um, but so it was, it was a scary decision, but ultimately I really felt like the Lord was calling me to it. And I felt like he confirmed it multiple times. And, and so gladly at that point, I'm like, if the Lord is in this, then I am in this like fully, um, which is, which is too. And I think this is an encouragement. It's an encouragement to me. So I hope it's an encouragement to everyone listening to, if you feel that the Lord has called you to do something, then no matter what happens after that, like, let's say that the business starts to, you know, crumble something like I can know in confidence that at that point in time, 
I did what I was supposed to do. Like, I don't have to regret those decisions because I know that the Lord called me to do them. So I think that's really important too, is not looking back, you know, I think, I forget what it is, like taking your hand at the plow and looking back as you're doing it, all that, like, that's not what the Lord would have us to do. If you know he's called you to something, step out and don't look back. Don't look back. So good. Goosebumps yet again. And I'm not even lying, <laughs> like, bro, it, it's <laughs> It is honestly wild right now. Lord. So good. So good. And again, I think whenever you, whenever you talk, right. And, and I hear you, I don't hear you. I hear the Lord's mm. intentional fingerprints, footprints, movements, character being like woven into your life is woven the word. I don't know, but you know, in your life. And I just think that is just so amazing. We talked about the mm. Lord being faithful. We talked about the Lord being kind, and now it's just really intentional. The yeah. Lord is so, so intentional. And I love your story and just love how the Lord brought these little things along the way from people that you, um, looked up to and knew that they were yeah. strong in the Lord as well. And that if, you know, like we have to believe the people in our corner that they hear from God as well, that they yeah. are for us, that they, you know, want the best for us. And therefore, if things are a little wonky in our mindset, if we can't see clearly, we do lean on the other people. I think of right. Moses and Aaron and Ur, you know, like how they were holding up Moses's hand so that mm. Israelites can get the victory. I feel like that's how it is in our Christian faith. We have to have people beside us to help us. And that journey, when our hands get weak, when our focus gets a little off track, when our it's chaotic and we don't have as much clarity, we lean on other people to help us receive the victory that the Lord said you're going to get. Um, mm. And so to hear your story, that's what I, I hear. That's what I see. And, and it's amazing about the Bible. It's not this boring, basic, old thing. It is alive. It's active. It's present. And your yeah. story is reflected by what I've already read in scripture. And that's how the Lord makes it alive in our day to day. And so it's so, so good. Um, I do want to share one quick story. So your story was, this is what the Lord said. I believe it. He confirmed it. Great. So this is for you guys listening or watching us right now. Okay. Megan heard from the Lord. Amen. We see it. I also believed that the Lord had told me to quit mm -hmm. college for a little bit of time. Okay. Y'all know where this is going. Quit college for a little bit of time. Okay. And come back to it. Mm -hmm. All right. I wasn't just leaving to never come back and finish my education. And what I truly believe is that I heard the Lord. I went to a couple of other people and it was confirmed in a way, but I'm still learning the Lord's voice at the time. And so I remember coming to my parents and saying, Hey, this is what I believe the Lord to do. It felt like, I don't even know an acronym or, or a, a analogy to use what my dream or thought was going to be for college. It fell so quick. My parents did not agree to it. I talked to another lady mm. who was strong in the Lord and it was a disagreement there. And so what happened was I was mad at the Lord because mm. I said, Lord, I thought I heard you. I thought you confirmed this. I thought this was what you wanted. And yeah. it's not rocking with my parents right now. And, and this lady is not with me at all either. And I know who she is and who she is in you. And, and so I was really upset with the Lord. And I think that was that might've been sophomore year of college, right back home. And, and it wasn't until my junior year, which I'm currently in right now that the Lord spoke to me the first day of junior mm -hmm. college. And he said, you're exactly where God wants you to be. I remember the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit telling me that you're exactly where God wants you to be. But a year before that, I was extremely mad at the Lord, deeply yeah. hurt. And I remember the Lord asking me, he said, you want to talk to me? So no. I don't because what I thought I had heard was the movement of the Lord. So what I'm really trying to say is you have to be absolutely sure that yeah. you are hearing the Lord. Um, I did. I thought I did, but I'm still learning the Lord's voice at that point. Now I have a pretty concrete um, idea and understanding of the Lord's voice to me personally. So um, in hearing Megan's story, I don't want y'all to go and just like drop out of school or yep. quit job. Yes. I really want you guys to go to people <laughs> who are believers, who, who are for you, who um, can go into prayer yeah. with you about the situation. The steps that Megan took, I did not take. I took like two yeses from people and went with it and <laughs> fell to the ground. And 
I'm still in college to this day, right? So there are two different stories, two different ways. So if you feel the Lord leading you, definitely go to people in your corner, pray about it and see if that is your thing. And then if it's not, then keep going where you are and know that the Lord is going to work it out too. So there's two different stories for you guys. I don't want you guys to like drop everything and like go for it because I was, and I wasn't going, you know, like to work anywhere. I was going to go into full-time ministry. So I thought, but the plans weren't there, all of that. So what I'm saying is really make sure you're hearing the Lord surround yourself with people who can go to God for you and receive the clarity that maybe you're lacking and, yeah, I just thought that is a, such a funny story um, for me because some people didn't finish college and it was the Lord's will for them. And then for yeah. me, it is to finish college and that's the Lord's will for me. So um, I love yeah. your story, but I just wanted to share the other side for of sure. what, you know, a no may be, right? Yours yeah. is a yes and mine was a no, but the Lord yeah. was still faithful in both. He's faithful in both. And I love that you said that too, like a lot of the ultimate decision that you made was from the counsel of other people. And I think that same thing here, like if my parents or his parents were like, that's a really bad idea, I definitely, you know, like super against it. Then that's something where I'm like, all right, second guessing, like, did I really hear these things? You know, all of that, because I think the counsel like is so important and so vital. And and I think too, like you said, like all throughout our lives, we're gonna receive yeses, but we're also gonna receive no's and we are gonna miss here, you know, and all of that. Um, but praise the Lord, like in both of those things, he is so faithful to carry us and to carry us through and to make sure that we're not totally falling. You know, he, he's got us. He's so good. So I, yeah, I'm so glad you shared that too. Cause I think too, like in my own life, there's things where I'm like, this is it. I'm running with everything. And he's like, wait a minute. Like (laughs) I didn't say that, you know? So yeah, I think that's, that's so helpful that you were saying that too. For sure. And that's the kindness of the Lord to where Mm -hmm. obviously we do have free will. We do make choices and the Lord, he urges us to seek him. He urges us to come to him, but Mm -hmm. he's not going to force us to do that. And so I even remember last week I had found myself listening less to sermons and more to like shows now for how people do their own personal life is so different. Personal, uh, spiritual life is different, but for me, I have to have a lot of um, godly Christian influence, like constantly flowing through my ears. And because I'm a binge watcher on shows, so I will sit and watch so many shows. But what I found was, (laughs) what I found was that I was spending less and less time with the Lord and it was starting to, I didn't Mm. really take notice of it until one moment and the kindness of the Lord. And this is what I would define mercy of God is that he will call us, convict us and challenge us, correct us to bring us back to him. That's the mercy of God. It's not, oh, baby, you know, you, you cute. And I love you. You cute. (laughs) I see this in you. I need you to come back. It is calling Mm. us out. It is telling us you're watching too much of this. You're doing too much of this. You're not doing enough of this. Come back. That's the mercy of God for me. And it's not fun. It's not a great feeling. It's not cute. It's not dandy. It is Mm -hmm. the conviction, the challenge, the correction, the kindness of the Holy Spirit. And so it can be in a big decision of like, you know, dropping out of college, um, you know, quitting your job, or it can be, are you bringing in more secular music than you are Christian music? Are you putting your um, Bible to the side more than doing it? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's knowing the different little things that we kind of step away from the Lord with. Are you speaking things that really don't bring any encouragement to anybody? You're just complaining more. It's these things that the Lord calls us out, corrects us. That is his kindness and mercy toward us. And I think for me, I'm thankful that I'm still in college. I'm thankful that I'm still getting a degree. I'm thankful that I'm still where I am because the Lord called me out in a way that I just didn't want to be called out. Yeah, you know? yeah, and so sure. that is the, that's the kindness of the Lord um, that we get to uh, take part in every single day. Amen. So, I okay. love that. I love that. Yeah. That's so good. 
Thank you guys so much for listening to Lava Lexi Howl. I hope today has been so fun for you to listen to the conversation today. I'm absolutely grateful to chat with you guys each and every month, sitting with special guests, or we just talk one-on-one -on -one about whatever the Lord has put on my heart. And I'm just grateful that you get to be a part of it and that I get to be a part of your life, which is so special and unique to the Lord. And I'm just grateful for you. So I hope that this has been an incredible encouragement to you. If you have not already gotten your copy of my book, Dear Broken Girl, you can get that on Amazon. Now, if you want a signed copy of my book, you can simply send me a message on my Instagram account at Dear Broken Girl or my Facebook account at Dear Broken Girl and let me know you want a signed copy. Be sure to get Dear Broken Girl for yourself, for your mama, for your friends, for your family, and even for a stranger. This book is to teach and remind you of your worth in Jesus. And I just want you to be equipped in what he's already called you to and to be empowered to do the things that he has set for you. So that is Dear Broken Girl. Please be sure to get your copy. Um, also, I want to let you guys know about my new podcast called Truth Be Told. It is found on YouTube, on Apple, on Spotify, and a lot of other platforms for you to go and check out. It is a conversation that happens each and every other Tuesday along with some bonus episodes that I have throughout the month and I just want you guys to be a part of that movement, that conversation and just what the Lord is doing. So head over to the YouTube channel, head over to the podcast on different streaming platforms and listen to those conversations and be sure to subscribe to that as well. Um, I'm just grateful for you guys and and I am so excited to take this journey with you. But before I let you leave, can I pray over you? Father, I'm thankful for those who are listening to my, me right now. I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would comfort them. I pray that you would guide them. I pray that you would give them clarity and, and just hope for the things that you have for them. Would you use them for your glory? Would you bless them for their good? And would you let them know how loved they are by you? You are good. You are holy. And we are just so thankful to be loved by you, Jesus. It's in your name that I pray. Amen.